So thanks everybody for coming. Uh, we're going to get started here pretty soon. Um, let the last few folks get some food here. Uh, I'm Kelly with Atlassian, and uh, we have our expert partner here today for doing a presentation for us. So uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get started. Thanks everyone for coming out. Thanks, <laughs> sure. All right. Hey, everybody. Hey. So, uh, this is uh, Insider Tips and Tricks Using the Lapsing Tools. My name's Brian. I'm with Precipio Consulting. A little bit about Precipio first. Uh, we are uh, the local Atlassian expert. We've been Atlassian expert partners for over six years. And uh, we're one of five platinum experts, sorry, platinum enterprise experts in the country. Over 99% uh, of our projects are Atlassian related. And we have hundreds of clients across the US ranging in size from 20 person companies to Fortune 20 enterprises spanning many different industries. Uh, we help our clients with process centric technology solutions that facilitate traditional business process management, IT service management based on idle and software development life cycles. And in the SDLC space, we're helping clients transition from traditional waterfall to agile. Uh, whatever widgets you produce, we can help improve the quality and throughput at the lowest cost. A little bit about me. Uh, my name is Brian Robinson. I'm a senior, uh, a senior solutions architect and certified scrum master at Precipio Consulting. My background is in web and software development. Prior to Precipio, I was a software developer for about 15 years. And I've been with Precipio the last year, and I've been a user of Atlassian tools exclusively for the last uh, three or four years. Just kind of introducing you to the uh, Atlassian uh, uh, tools. There's a lot of them. Uh, Atlassian makes a lot of products uh, for everything from project management to issue tracking to team collaboration to source code management, code review, coverage, and continuous integration. We're not going to talk about every single product up here on the list, but we're going to focus on a few. And what I'm going to show you today is kind of how you can take the different Atlassian products and integrate them together and go through a fluid software development lifecycle. So we're going to focus on five of the products today. I'm going to give you a brief introduction to each product, and then I'll show you a demo, and then we'll see kind of how all these products are made to work together. First, we're going to cover HipChat and talk about Confluence, move on to Jira, Bitbucket, and then Bamboo. So HipChat is the first product I want to talk to you about. HipChat is Atlassian's uh, team and enterprise communication tool. You can think of it kind of as uh, Hangouts or uh, iMessage for your business. It provides a group and private chat. You can use it with text-based chat, with voice chat and video. HipChat also offers file sharing and link sharing, and it integrates really smoothly with 80 different tools. So if there's a SaaS service that you use out there, HipChat likely integrates with it. Uh, there's an API, if you're building your own tool, you can integrate that into HipChat as well. HipChat also runs on everything. So there's clients for Mac OS, there's clients for Windows, for Linux, there's mobile clients for iOS and Android. There's a web client if you're off-site somewhere and you don't have access to your own device. HipChat also runs in the cloud as a service, and you can even run it as your uh, on your own hardware as a server behind your firewall. I'll just show you um, tip chat really quickly. Pull up. So this is the uh, hip chat map client over here. I had a little discussion with uh, Aaron earlier this morning. So hip chat, hip chat's organized into rooms. So I've got rooms over here. These are all internal rooms that I use every day. And I can also have individual conversations with people on my team. It shows me the status, whether people are available or on calls. Amanda and Robin are both red, so they might be talking to each other. And um, you can uh, 
you can at somebody, so you add another user and it sends them a notification that you're <coughs> contacting them. Uh, you could share images. I asked Erin for a, a screenshot for a slide and she sent it to me over HipChat. Uh, it supports uh, all these cool little emojis and things like that, so it's a little fun aspect integrated into HipChat. We're gonna talk about the integration piece that HipChat has with the applications as we go on. So you can see down here, I've got a couple of notifications from Confluence that a uh, page was created by me. So you can use this in, in multiple different ways. You can have one-on-one -on -one chats, you can do text, voice, video. So next, uh, just a little brief overview of Confluence. Confluence is Atlassian's product for team collaboration. Uh, it's for knowledge management, requirements gathering. It allows you to create documents and you can discuss those and share them with your team members. You can add comments and attachments, assign tasks and track schedules using add-ons such as team calendars. Confluence is also great for agile development. There's a template for product requirements that's included right out of the box. So you can include goals and assumptions, requirements and user stories, UX and UI notes. You can track questions and you can do all that within a single page of Confluence. Requirements or user stories can be linked to JIRA in just a couple of clicks. And we're gonna talk about that in a few minutes. So I'm gonna switch over and show you Confluence really quick. So this is the Confluence dashboard that comes up when you first log in and it gives you a um, list of the site spaces. Confluence is organized into spaces. In this particular environment, we've got three. We've got a Agile, one on space exploration, and one on waterfall. We're gonna be looking at the Agile space today. And then on the right side, I've got a list of all the recent updates. These are all uh, the Confluence pages that have been created or recently updated. Got a search engine up here at the top. It'll show me my recent searches here. I can get a list of spaces. I can get a list of people that are on my team within my organization here. And so what we're gonna do today is kind of walk you through just how to kind of see how these products work together. What we've done is we've created this demo website. And so I've got a demo website right here. It's got a basic website. Talks about a little bit about my company. My company is a web development company. And we've got a home page and an about page. And then I've got a couple of people. And so these are kind of the about us pages. And so what my requirement is, is to add a, uh, add a page about myself to the site. So I've got one for Cosmo, he's our product manager. And then I've got one for Christopher, he's another developer. And so what I want is another page that looks like this that has my name, like what I like, and then list of some of my favorite things. And so in order to do that, I'll come over to Confluence and I cr click on the Create button and Confluence gives you all these templates just right out of the box. And so what I could do is come down here, I'm in my Agile space, go over to Product Requirements. So I wanna create a new Product Requirements document. I click on Create. And what I've got is a template that just has all these fields that I fill out, start entering in my product requirements. I give the page a title, can target the release. I can uh, go in, I can use the app again, select a person, does a look up against the people in my team. And then I could start listing out the goals and the background, the assumptions, list my requirements here in a nice table put any other notes and questions that I have, and then I can click save and it'll create a new document. Anybody that I've mentioned in, uh, in the section up here will also get a notification right out of the box that a new page has been created. So in interest of time, I've already created kind of a blueprint for this. So we're gonna take a look at my product requirements page that I created for myself. So I'm targeting release one, the website. I've got a Jira Epic here. So the Epic was to add member profiles to my demo website. And then my 
document status, Cosmo is the owner of the document. And since I'm the developer, I'm gonna be the designer, the developer, and the QA for this. And then I'll be listed out my goals, my background, my assumptions, and then I've got my requirements here. I've got two requirements today. First requirement is to um, add to learn more about Brian Page. So just add up, add some personal and professional details and make sure that the navigation bar on the left side gets updated. And then I've got a second requirement that uh, to see uh, some re real details. So what I'm gonna do is kind of walk you through how we can transition these requirements to issues and tasks in JIRA. So speaking of JIRA, let's take a look at a little bit about JIRA itself. So JIRA is Atlassian's product management and issue tracking tool. It was actually the first product that I used a few years ago when I was introduced to the Atlassian suite. I have used some other tools before. I, I think I came from uh, Bugzilla and went from Bugzilla into JIRA. And I really like the interface. I like the workflows. I like a lot of the utility that I got out of, <laughs> out of JIRA that I didn't have in, in uh, Bugzilla before. Uh, JIRA is mainly used to capture, organize, <laughs> assign, and track issues. Uh, you can create dashboards like this that allow you to see a project activity at a glance. Uh, there's built-in workflows that allow teams to cycle through uh, features and bugs through the development process really quickly. And there's a few add-ons available. Well, there's actually a lot of add-ons available to JIRA. A few of them um, allow you to do things like agile boards, project portfolios. You can integrate with third-party applications like Salesforce and SAP. Uh, there's a really rich API that uh, you can do further integrations with. My job at Precipia Consulting, I do a lot of custom development around JIRA and write custom add-ons for our, our customers and clients. So one of the cool things you could do with, uh, with Confluence is you can link it to JIRA. And it's really easy to take a product requirement that we've developed here and create a JIRA issue out of it. So all I need to do is come onto the page and I can highlight this learn about Brian. And when I do, I get these two uh, little pop-ups. I get one that says add an inline comment. That's another feature of Confluence. And I get this create JIRA issue. So I click on create issue. Since we had our epic established at the top, it's gonna automatically link it to our epic, just demo four, and it's gonna populate the summary for me. And then if I look down here, it sees that I'm in a table. So it says, looks like you're creating issues from a table. Do I want to create two issues? I can say create two issues. So now I've got this confirmation that says the following issues will be created, learn about Brian and real details. I click on create. And now Confluence is telling me that two issues have been created. If I scroll back down here, now I've got two issues created in my requirements page. I've got demo seven and demo eight. <laughs> so if I come over here and open this issue, see I've got an issue created right out of the box. So right now the issue is set up, it's a story. It's uh, status is set to to-do. There's a workflow that we can attach to issues. This is a real simple workflow. So we just basically have, uh, we just have three states. We've got to-do, done, and in progress. If I'm ready to start working on this, I can click the in progress button and it'll put it into in progress state. I'm gonna switch it back to to-do for right now. And I can assign it. So I can come in here and I can get a list of all my team members. Chris is one. But I'm right now I'm gonna assign this to myself. So I've got my issue assigned to me. I've got an issue link here 
a links back to my Confluence page that shows the integration between Confluence and Jira. So we've got that. So now it's time for me to actually do something with this. I've been assigned this issue and I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna start working on it. And so traditionally what I would get is a notification that says, okay, new issue's been assigned to me, there's something for me to do. I look in here, I've got this Learn About Brian page that I need to create. And I go back to the requirements, try to read about those, figure out what I'm supposed to do, and then I start working. Well, there's a real easy way to kind of get started working within this, within the system. So I can come down here to this development link and I can create a branch. And we've got Jira hooked up to Bitbucket, which I'm gonna talk about next, which is our source code repository. I'm gonna switch back and talk to you a little bit about Bitbucket really quick. So Bitbucket is Atlassian's tool for Git and Mercurial repositories in the cloud. Teams of, of all sizes use uh, Bitbucket for centralizing and managing the source code. It includes tools for code comments, for code reviews, and use pull requests. Developers uh, can also browse and search their source code, and navigate through commit histories, filter by branches and tags right from the browser. And Bitbucket also integrates with Jira for feature requests and issue tracking. So speaking of integrating with Jira, I clicked on that create branch link and we've got our Bitbucket page up here. My Bitbucket repository is called Demo Website. I'm going to create a branch off of our off of our master branch here in Bitbucket, and Jira's already populated my branch name with Demo Seven Learn About Brian. So this is showing me that I've got my I've got my Jira issue linked right back into my Git repository. So I'll create a branch. And Git's created a branch for me. Now, Lassian's got another tool for kind of Git management called Source Tree, and I've got that installed, linked up. So right from Bitbucket, I can check out my branch in Source Tree. So I'm gonna do that really quick over here. And there we go. So I've checked out I've checked out this branch in source tree. I did that on the other screen. And I brought up my demo website files. So I've got all these files set up right here. I'm using Sublime Text right here. I could easily use another IDE. I could use uh, IntelliJ or Eclipse or I could use uh, Visual Studio, depending on what type of app you're building. Just got a little HTML website that I'm working on right now. So what I need to do is create a Learn About Brian page. So I'm gonna create this, and I'm gonna create a new document, and change this to my name. And I like Git too, I like mac and cheese. <coughs> Should make this. Yeah, should do that. Be nice. And, uh, I like Python too. Chris has more of a sense of humor than I do, so you need to hit something. All right, so I've made a new page. I'm going to call it Brian.html. We've got a couple of uh, Python files in here that are going to help us do some transformations on these files. And so I created my new HTML page, and I'm going to come back over here. Here's a, here we go. Here's source tree. So I've got this branch right here. Here's my demo seven branch. And when I go and look at the uncommitted changes, it's going to show me that there is a Brian.html file. It shows me the file contents. So I can click on this. There's been. Uh, One's added, so I come over here and I hit commit. 
and then it gives me a way so I can uh, put in my commit message. And what I'm going to do here is put in the the issue key name, which I get from the name of my branch, and I'm going to say add uh, about Brian Page. I also have the option right here to push changes immediately to Bitbucket, so I'm going to do that. So in like one click. I can add my git commit and then push my changes straight up into Bitbucket. And so my push went through. If I go back to Bitbucket and look at the commits, you can see my commits right here. If I click on the commit, I can see what changed. Brian.html page was two lines were added to that page. So that's Bitbucket. Now let's say I'm done. So I'm done. I think I fulfilled the first requirement. So what I'm going to do next is create a pull request. And this is one of the cool things you can do in Bitbucket. This is going to help me kick off a code review. So what I want to do is take my commit that I just that I just submitted. The bucket's going to automatically set it for me. I want to merge this demo 7 branch into master. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to add, uh, I can search for users here. <coughs> I'm going to add uh, Chris. He's one of my teammates. I'm adding him as a reviewer. And then I'm going to close this branch once the pull request is merged. And so come here and I'll create this pull request. And so I've created a pull request. Here's my pull request screen. It shows you what files were changed. You can get a list of the commits on this. Get a list of the activity so I could see when things were done. Chris is on site with a client right now, so he's not going to be able to prove this for me. But normally he would get a message that says, Brian created a pull request. You're an approver. He needs to, you need to approve this. So what he can do is come through. He can look at the code that I wrote. If he needs to, he can come in and make comments, or can come in and uh, I could go to the exact line if he wants to, and say uh, mac and cheese. Really, let's pretend that's Chris. And I could put a comment on that, so it'll do line by line. Let's say what's good. So maybe we could get line by line comments during a code review this way. So I'll come up here. I'm going to approve this pull request. So now the pull request is approved. Add a little green checkbox next to my name. If Chris had approved it, it would be green there as well. And so this is ready to go back into master. Master is our kind of source of truth. It's the part of the repo that our production code lives in. So I'm going to merge this code into master. It's going to create a pull request for me. Say add a commit message. It says uh, demo seven was merged as part of pull request three. Hit the merge button. Now this demo seven pull request is merged into master. So if everything worked right. Should be able to go. Here and refresh our product requirements page and you can see our product requirements are now done because we've merged that request into the master code it just needs to be deployed. Well, we can integrate our deployment into our process here using another tool that's called bamboo. And Bamboo is Atlassian's tool for continuous integration and delivery. So it supports integration with all kinds of open source tools and all kinds, so you can test all kinds of applications. You can trigger these automatically by just changing, making changes inside your source code repository. Uh, in addition to running builds and tests, Bamboo can connect to Jira and Bitbucket to provide a streamlined view of your whole development process. So Bamboo gives you a dashboard of all the processes that have been going on. So 
So this is a bamboo build dashboard. Refresh this. So you can see 40 seconds ago, uh, build number 12 ran and it included changes by me. It uh, had two commits. So I added uh, the demo seven branch and then I merged the pull request there. Can dig down into here and I can see all the history of all the builds that have run. So there have been a few builds run in the last couple of days and then a couple of weeks ago. Gives me an average duration of how long that, that build and deploy took to run and how many have been successful. And then I can come over here and I can look at uh, the deployments. And so the last deployment ran last night. So I don't have this configured for automatic deployments yet. So what I need to do, I've got a good working build here. So what I can do is go through and I can kick off a deployment. So I just click on this upload to the cloud icon here. And I wanna create a new release from the build result. So I'm gonna take this uh, build number 12 and I'm gonna start this deployment and it's gonna push it out to our demo Apache server, which is our demo website that's back over here. So I just hit start deployment. And deployment, got a success message, thankfully. If we look, I've got a, a log here that shows us everything that was going on behind the scenes during the deployment. And if we go back to our demo website, I refresh this. Now I've got a Bryant page over here in the left hand navigation. And it's got my name. So it's all like Git, Mac and Cheese, and Python. So it's going through all the different tools, starting with the requirements, putting the requirement into JIRA for issue tracking, creating a branch in Bitbucket and then merging that branch into Bitbucket, which kicks off a build into, uh, into Bamboo, and then finally Bamboo allowing us to deploy out to our production website here. <clears throat> so let's take a look at a couple things that are going on under the hood. So first thing, uh, I kind of mentioned this a little bit ago, but there's a whole development panel inside of JIRA. And what this does is it has all the integration into your dev tools. And you get real-time status updates and you get a drill down into your development process. So what we've got, if we go back to JIRA, I'm going to click back into this demo 7 link. So when we first started and we created that branch, I just had a create branch link inside of my issue. And now I've got a branch link, I've got some commits, I've got a pull request, and I've got a build, and I've got a deployment message. So as I was going through that whole development cycle, Jira was getting real-time updates with what I was doing. So my project manager could go into JIRA and see where I am in any step of the process. I can click into the branch. I can get a list of all the branches that have been created for this particular issue. Now, most development isn't that simple, so you might have multiple branches. You might have multiple commits. I've got a couple commits here. One was the commit I made when I created the page. The other was the commit from the pull request. If it's something that's taken me a few days, I can commit at the end of every day. And it'll give me a list right here in JIRA of all the commits that I've made. The project manager doesn't even have to go to Bitbucket or even know that Bitbucket's there. Project manager can do his or her job within JIRA. I, as a developer, don't have to go back to JIRA to make updates to show my status and my progress on the particular issue. And I can see uh, the pull request, so I could see the results of of what was going on. I know there's a couple of comments here. I can drill into that. It'll take me into Bitbucket, show me the comments that were made on that particular issue. And then finally, I get the results of my build. I get the results of my deployment. So all this stuff happens automatically in real time. 
Uh, another thing that we've got going on too is workflow automation. And this, this part is, is really cool to me as a developer. So this integrates into the DevTool stacks with Jira and it helps the issue state, the issue status update on its own. So you've got, basically what you do is you assign a trigger to a transition between a workflow state going from to do to in progress and from in progress to done in our case. And there's a whole set of triggers that you can set these up on. You can uh, set it up on commits, you can set it up on uh, when reviews are started, when branches are created, when pull requests are open, when uh, pull requests are declined or merged. So there's all kinds of triggers you can do depending on how complex your workflow is. So to kind of show you how that works, go right here and I'm gonna go down to this demo number eight. So this is a issue that's in, uh, in to-do status. And so this is asking me for just some real details about myself. And so I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna create a branch. Now if we look real quick, we're in to-do status on this particular issue. <clears throat> and so if I create a branch, I create that branch in Bitbucket, Uh, I'm a developer on it, I've created a branch. That means that I'm, I've gotten started on development, or at least I want my project manager to think I am. So when I go back to my product requirements page, I can hit refresh on this, and now my demo eight's set to in progress. If I click back to, into my um, Jira issue, you can see the Jira issue status is in progress. If my project manager had a dashboard going, you can see that I've started working on this particular issue. It also added my branch to my development pane over here. And so I could go through, you can check out my branch and source tree. There's the source tree notification. You come over here. Go to Sublime Text. I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna change mac and cheese to tacos because everybody loves tacos. Mm -hmm. So mac that's and cheese tacos. mac and cheese tacos. Mm -hmm. All right, why don't we do that? Mac and cheese tacos. That's pretty crazy. All right, so now I've got, uh, now I've got a change. So go back to my working copy. Look here, if I click on this, shows me what I changed. Change mac and cheese to mac and cheese tacos. I'm gonna commit this back to demo eight. Add tacos. How come you can never type when you're doing demos? And hit commit. So I've committed back. Check uh, demo eight real quick. So demo eight, you can see it just added a commit. I didn't even have to refresh the page. It's getting real time updates. Go back to Bitbucket. I'm gonna create a pull request. I'm gonna send demo eight to there. I'm gonna have Chris as a reviewer. And there's, there's things you can do in Bitbucket. You can require reviewers. You can require the number of reviewers. You can say that this, this merge has to be um, approved by two people. So that way you have uh, coverage there. I don't have any of that in place right now. So done that, Chris can see what I changed. I'm gonna approve it and then I'm gonna merge it. And this merging means that, that I'm done. I mean, everything I've done is going into production. It's ready. So. We remember our issue is an in-progress status, so I'm going to merge this pull request. And, let's see. It's the remix. Yeah. So I'm going to merge the pull request, so it's merging. So my pull request is now merged. If we go back and look at, 
this. Now we've got two commits and a merge pull request. And if we look up here, the status is still in progress. That doesn't get automatically updated. So now my status is done. So that issue's done. And we go over here to Bamboo. Should be able to look at my Bamboo dashboard. Bamboo's running. You see there's a little progress bar right there. There's a build in progress. Still in progress or is it lying to me? It's done. So it was lying to me. So I've got build number 13 worked. So now I can go to my deployment. Over here. Create a new release. I'm gonna release number 13. I'm going to deploy out here in progress. Successfully deployed back. And so now when I upload this or reload this frame, I should see mac and cheese tacos. So, but, and all the time behind the scenes, <coughs> Jira has been updated automatically with the status of the issue showing me that the build kicked off, the deployment kicked off, such. And this whole time, I don't know if you noticed what was going on in the upper right corner, but we also had HipChat integration with all our tools. And so what you can do across your tool set is have real-time application updates. You can link all of your Atlassian applications to HipChat so that they push out notifications from the applications. And then you can configure these notifications based on what's going on. If I had a room that was uh, demo website errors, I could just push my errors from Bamboo into that room. And that could be monitored by a QA team or something like that. So if I go back and pull up HipChat, you can see in my demo room now, I've got this whole list Aaron uploaded a photo of me talking. I've got a whole list here from Jira. I've got my Jira uh, issue was created. I've got Confluence page was updated. Bitbucket is showing that I committed some, some commits on the demo seven branch. Got some uh, more Bitbucket notifications. Bitbucket showing that a pull request was merged by me. Got some more of the bamboo and then bamboo passes off its information. And there, it's showing me that a deployment started, then it completed, then it'll go, we'll go through the same process again. Sorry, hmm? Sorry Okay, so you can see though, I mean, we could just push all our application <clears throat> updates and such from Bitbucket and from Jira, and from Confluence, and from Bamboo, straight into HipChat. Can I also start to build deployments from HipChat? Can you? Like an IOC bug, can I send like a command, like a Bamboo code build from HipChat? Um, I'm not sure. You, you might be able to. Perhaps with API. Yeah, you could, do, you could probably do an API integration with that. I mean, the cool thing about about those is that. Um... Sorry about that. Oh, that's okay. Are we back? Okay, cool. This is a good time to open up for questions anyway. So, ta-da. Yeah. Right. yeah, I mean that, that's definitely something you can do. And you can go in and you can manually trigger builds in Bamboo. You can go through and you can script those out too. There's API hooks where you can trigger a, a Bamboo build based on that. It doesn't have to be a source code update. Another question? For the Bamboo, I saw you deploy to production, but um, do you have any examples where that goes to the <coughs> tests or a series of uh, acceptance tests? Yeah, sure. 
Um, I'll just kind of show you. I mean, this is a real kind of lightweight example we've got set up. But um, so inside Bamboo, if I go look at my, if I go look at my demo website plan that I created. I've got some unit tests that we're running on here. And if I go and look at the plan, Bamboo is, is set up where you, you structure it with jobs. Mm -hmm. And so this particular this particular plan has three jobs that it's set up with. There's a default job that just goes and grabs the source code, runs a build against um, whatever we're, we're building against. This is a simple website. If I had a Java app, I could run Maven, do a build, do all my tests there. Then we've got a unit test job that kicks off. What it's doing is uh, doing a source code checkout and then runs a script or you can point it to uh, a test script that you have on your server. Right now we just got this Python file that's a file checker. And so if it finds anything abnormal, it's gonna write it out, either a log entry or write it out to output and then Bamboo can pick up on that and say that uh, there's an error. Such. And then finally, the, the last job in the chain is to package the artifacts. And what we have this doing is um, creating a list of the files, and then it just runs uh, a jar to just kind of jar them up and put them into a package for us that we can deploy out to patch. So, any other questions? One of the things we struggle with is the chattiness of the email notifications when we're using Jira. Mm -hmm. If you're using HipChat instead, does that move that all towards HipChat, or is the does the control of how chatty it is go towards the user as opposed to the admin of the of the Jira installation? Well, you're you can configure both. Um, different applications have kind of a different granularity as far as what notifications you can. You can uh, configure the advantage. I think to using HipChat over email is that you can target messages really easily with HipChat. So you can send different message types to different rooms. So, like I said, you could have a you could have a HipChat room that's website errors, and you could send all of the the website errors coming out of Bamboo, like build errors and things like that, to that room, and then only the people that are monitoring that room are the ones getting those no those notifications. Whereas with email, I mean, everybody's going to get every email. Yeah. Hey, you just mentioned people getting notifications for rooms. On, on our rooms, they're, they're sort of silent. You have to go and inspect the rooms. Is there any way to, um, I guess, make a room more chatty? Um, so like an air room, like have to yell at, you know, or send emails to all yeah, the Sure, or... I can, um, I should be able to show you that here too. So if I go into notifications for this bamboo build, if, I, if you noticed um, when bamboo was running, I was getting notifications at the top of the screen. And that's a setting here over in uh, bamboo where I can um, just check this notify box. And it basically turns on the, the growl notifications and new, new messages and things like that. Okay, but is that only like the notification across the, like like the Mac notification, or is that a an email as well? Uh, we'll do an email. No, I mean I can add an email though if I needed uh, okay, to. Cool. So I could go in here. I've got I've got two events right now for um, for jobs, and then I don't have an email server configured right here. But if I did, I could go in and um, set the all builds completed. I could set it. I could set it to an email address. I could send it to a group of people. I could do an IM address. I could even get as granular as you know people that have committed to the build and like, hey man, your your build's broken, Something like that. Um, could do that. We could do uh, user notifications, and if I just leave it as a user notification, I get I. Um, I'm not sure where those go. This might go to email too. I know in some apps, like uh, Stash has a, a drawer job at the top of the screen that gets all your application notifications collected. Uh, are there any other questions? All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Got uh, one last 
slideshow. It's just the Precipio slide. It's got our contact email address right there. We'll be here for a little while if anybody wants to talk to us about anything, about how to use the products. Uh, we do. We also do trainings and implementations, and it's a lot of webinars we have on the site. Um, so yeah, we'd love to talk to you guys, learn more about what we do and how we can help you. Thanks very much.